All right, everyone. Um, hi, let's get today's session started. Sorry for the slight delay. Just wanted to make sure that um, you know anyone who wanted to join um, is not missing out on the beginning. So, um, hi, my name is Ari. I'm the marketing coordinator for EMEA um, here at eFolder. I'm based out of Berlin, Germany, where it's really rather rainy and cold today, so perfect webinar weather, um, in my opinion. So I'm really excited to have you guys on board. Um, I think for some reason my um, control panel is not disappearing, so you guys might see you know, um, me opening up questions. I'm sorry about that. I can't um, you know, delete that, but just pretend it's not there and I'm gonna you know, minimize it so you guys, you guys can see the slides. But um, yeah, again, thanks for joining us today. Um, this webinar brings together eFolder experts and staff for a deep dive um, practical discussion and you know, to talk about best practices on bringing a file sync solution to market in Europe. And for that, we're being joined by Mike Willis, who is an eFolder anchor partner of ours based out of Edinburgh in Scotland, where apparently it's beautiful and sunny today, so I've clearly picked the wrong city um, to work out of. But hi, Mike, and thanks so much for joining us today. Good morning. All right, so before we go through the agenda, let's just cover a few um, housekeeping items. So today's session will be recorded and will be made available on eFolder's YouTube channel. But everyone who registered for the event will also get um, you know, the slides and a recording made available to you by email just later today. We've put everyone in um, everyone who registered in listen-only mode, which means that you can enjoy the audio portion of today's webinar either using your computer audio or dialing in through your phone, um, and the dial-in information is um, can be found in your email. Um, questions are strongly encouraged. Um, we have planned a special Q&A sec section towards the end, um, but do go along and raise any questions you have um, along the way. Since I can't completely make my um, control panel disappear, I'm just you know, going to extend it occasionally, um, every other slide or so, to check for questions, um, so to not disturb the view of the slides. But um, yeah, we'll definitely make sure to answer all questions um, as we go along. So first off, I would like to introduce um, the, our partner for today's webinar. Um, as I've already mentioned, we're being joined by Mike Willis, who, after hearing about eFolder Anchor at a user group meeting in Scotland, started deploying the Anchor solution um, in the beginning of 2015, so just over a year ago, um, and by now has roughly 175 end users deployed on the platform. Mike originally started a career in publishing, um, and then moved into the tech sector roughly 16 years ago and has been working in IT ever since. So, hi, Mike. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. And hi. perhaps you could, you know, talk a little bit about your business um, to help the audience understand, you know, the kind of support you provide and the client verticals you serve. Okay, um, I'm a, a, an IT uh, support company in, in the main, uh, dealing uh, with small companies up to about 25 or 30 users uh, in each company. Um, I've um, had my uh, business um, for support tech going since uh, 2001 and um, have purposely kept it as a, as a fairly tight team. It's just myself and my, and my wife that, that runs the business, but uh, we service um, we manage about 30 networks and uh, are always looking for, for new, uh, exciting products to, 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 introduce, to uh, introduce to our clients, uh, particularly ones that we can, we can offer as a, a, on a managed service base, uh, basis, which okay. are relatively um, you know, um, easy to deploy and uh, to manage um, and uh, can take a recurring revenue from. Perfect. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Let me just see, because I see we have... Um question, but that seems to be perfect. Um, great. So thanks so much for the introduction, Mike. Um, I'm just going to jump right in if you want to mute yourself um, for the time being until we get to the Q&A round um, for you. That um, is going to eliminate any chance of background noise. But yeah, so let's get started on today's topic, file sync and you know deploying a file sync product in 
EMEA, for anyone who doesn't know what EMEA stands for, it's the abbreviation for Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. And, you know, if you're a European provider of web managed or dedicated hosting services, you're probably all too familiar with the hype around cloud computing. And you probably also know that it often comes with a US perspective, right? So especially when looking at how the cloud industry or the cloud computing industry came about and really developed in Europe, um, it's pretty obvious that the first big push came from US companies. So it was probably around 2007 when Dropbox um, as the first main company or provider of cloud file sync um, solutions introduced that whole concept of cloud storage in Europe and um, you know introduced the idea for companies and individuals to access data from wherever they are. And people loved it. People um, were really fascinated with it. The concept became fairly popular and um, in a way it revolutionized the web industry. As a result of that, more and more competitive companies started offering the same solutions. So you as a managed service provider are probably all too familiar with names like Dropbox, OneDrive, Microsoft SharePoint. Um, and that's really because more and more companies or more and more individuals actually start using it in their private lives, right? I mean, if you see ads everywhere in Facebook um, of free trials and it's so easy to sign up and then when you sign up, it's very easy to use and it has a clean interface. Um, it's just a logical development that more and more consumers really hop on board with these solutions. But when we look at the file sync deployment in companies, the adoption rate across Europe is much slower than in the US. Um, the main reasons for that are a perceived lack of security, security policy agreements, a lack of security features, and a relative immaturity of the cloud services um, that all play into that hesitant adoption rate that we see in Europe. And, you know, to some extent, that's very much justified. Um, you know, it's, it makes sense for companies to be, especially here in Europe, to be so hesitant about deploying file sync solutions that come from the US because the general assumption is that they don't reach up to the European data security concerns and regulations that we have. And to be fair, when clients um, or when ind individual employees are trying to bring these solutions into their companies, they often mean well, right? Um, when they do that, they it's because they love using that cloud file sync service in their private life. Um, they know that these solutions are easy to use. And at the end of the day, all they're trying to do is to find ways for their team, for their company, to increase productivity and efficiency in the workplace. But they often lack an in-depth IT um, knowledge to really assess the realistic risks that they, you know, that may be caused by introducing consumer-grade products into the workplace. So a study that was published by um, Sky High Networks towards the end of last year surveyed roughly 12,000 um, cloud providers across Europe. Um, many of them, you know, were headquartered in the States but are offering their services in Europe. And the results of that study were really rather shocking. Um, out of the 12,000 you know, vendors provided or surveyed, Cloud, uh, Sky High found that roughly 84.6% of these services do not support multi-factor authentication, which is an additional um, security level um, between admins and users. 93% um, of them do not comply with enterprise security and compliance requirements which you know, range from encryption policies to um, certifications to additional security features like multi-factor authentication. Um, and rough, a little over 97% of them do not have ISO 27001 certification, um, which relates to encryption security. Um, and only 9.4% of these vendors um, or cloud providers encrypt data stored at rest. So, you know, when you look at these numbers, that is rather alarming, right? I mean, especially when you're a business owner, 
even if you like the value of, you know, cloud file sync features, reading that and being, you know, confronted with that risk um, through the news every day, it's not very encouraging to, you know, introduce that to your business, especially if you don't have the proper time to do research in as much depth as you should. Um, and then an additional issue is that, or, you know, an additional requirement for many European companies is, you know, if we introduce a file sync service and start leveraging the cloud, we want to make sure that our data is being stored in the EU. Um, it's probably no surprise to you that privacy laws between the US and the EU widely differ, um, and that the latter is much stricter regulated. So um, a couple of years ago, there was an agreement with, between the US and the EU called Safe Harbor. And it stated that US companies operating in Europe are not allowed to send users PII, which is personally identifiable information, um, to the states unless that data was adequately protected. And then once that data was outside Europe, um, it was not supposed to be you know, shared or accessed by other companies or organizations unless those also demonstrated that they will you know, adequately protect that data. So that was all good, and that made it much easier for U.S. companies to, um, you know, operate in Europe even if they didn't have a European data center until October of last year. Because with the whole NSA um, affair, they realized the European Court of Justice declared that agreement invalid because they realized that the U.S. government could still access the data of European citizens and was not ever subject to the same, you know, standards as the company storing that data. And you know, with so much insecurity and, um, and all these news around NSA and data security, it has become more and more important to European companies that they, in fact, can store their data within the EU. Yet when you look at the numbers um, that Sky High Networks found, um, they realized that only 14.3% of the cloud providers store their data inside the EU. Um, 3.6 are located in countries with equivalent data protection, um, Switzerland, for example. Um, and 17.2% roughly were stored under the US Harbor Agreement or Safe Harbor Agreement, which right now, um, with everything around that being an upheaval, is more of a gray zone than most companies would want to. And 64% roughly of the cloud vendors operating in Europe still stored their good still store their data um, you know, in the US, which means that for most European companies, that's not enough security to go about. So you as an MSP really um, might be challenged trying to introduce a concept like file sync that really is rather, can be rather effective for you know, efficiency, cooperation, et cetera, to companies in Europe because there are all these alarming factors that companies also take into consideration. So your role um, or your opportunity here is taking the role of the educator. Because what your clients should know and what, what you know would be good for you to tell them is that cloud storage per se is not a risk necessarily. Um, or other to say, you can minimize that risk by choosing a business grade file sync service that has data centers in Europe. Um, because with that, a huge, huge, huge part of that main concern can already be eliminated. And that's why we want to introduce Anchor, because Anchor is um, eFolder's business-grade file sync product that from day one has been developed with um, the need for MS, you know, MSP needs in mind. So it was developed to store sensitive corporate data. And with every development that we make, we keep the needs of you and your businesses in mind. Um, so just talking a little bit about security um, of Anchor or eFolder in general, we have three data centers across the world and one of them is located in Amsterdam. So we can guarantee that um, all the data of you and you know, your European clients can be stored in Europe in the EU, EU law and not be accessed by the US or any US entities. Um, we are HIPAA compliant, which means that we can guarantee that we store medical data the way it's supposed to be stored. Uh, stored sorry, and um, all data in, 
In the Cloud is Encrypted by Military Grade Encryption. And that goes for both in transit data and at rest data, which, as you may recall, a very small percentage of cloud vendors actually does. We're also one of the 2.8% of um, cloud providers that have been ISO 27001 certified. And because we operate in Europe, because we have a large variety of um, European partners or partners across all of EMEA, we have a whole compliance center that constantly tries to stay up to date with, you know, new regulations, new rules, especially in Europe. Um, so here you actually see the web user interface of our most recent Anchor version, Anchor 2.4.1. And with that version, we released an update to our web user interface that indicates the use of cookies, requests the acceptance of that use, and also offers a quick link to eFolder's privacy policy um, where you or your clients can quickly read up on how the data is being stored um, and how it's being encrypted. And all of that is to be in compliance with EU laws. And especially if you're located in Europe, you probably see this pop-up window. Um, ideally, on every website that you use and that you're supposed to enter personal data. Um, so that's, that's our way of staying compliant and on top of our local client security. So now that you get a bit of an idea of the anchor security and compliance features, I just wanted to give you a better idea of how the product works in real life, really. So by now, you've probably understood that it's a business-grade file sync solution, and in that way, offers a lot of the features that Dropbox would provide, or you know, OneDrive would, you know, be able to provide you with. Um, and so here, you see the primary desktop um, of the sync folder. So this is the repository for all of the users' work products. This is where they find you know, their private data, their private files, um, the team share folders, and any single documents um, that they may have stored in the sync tool. Which also means that any new content or edits made are automatically synced to the cloud and all the other devices that have the sync tool installed. Next, probably also no news to anyone, is that smartphone access becomes more and more important these days, right? So employees of every stripe want to get more and more work done on the go, which means they use their iPhone, their Android, or the Windows phone to ideally access and edit documents um, and email out data. And with eFolder Anchor, that's very easy and very straightforward. You can just install your sync tool on any phone type, so iPhone, Android, or Windows phone, and that way have automatically access to your sync tool. It means that you can, you know, access, open, email, and even edit documents right from your mobile device. Editing, of course, requires that you have the necessary, you know, um, software tools installed. But if you do, then that's really no problem. And the same features go for tablets as well. And then lastly, really from wherever you work from, whatever device you are working from, as long as you have internet, you can also always quickly log into your web portal. Um, and that way have the same types of team share folders, individual folders, and documents. Um, you can download them, work on them. Um, and again, all of that information is then synced across all different devices. And you're free to work on the go. So that's just a brief introduction of um, eFolder Anchor and how you know deploying a business grade solution can really help if diminishing a lot of the concerns that companies have around file sync and um, and cloud vendors. Um, bottom line being that it's not a risk per se; it's just the type of solution that you're choosing for your business and the amount of research that you have to do in order to make sure that your data is at you know, rested safely. Um, so with that, I would like to go over to Mike and, um, you know, talk a little more practical about how he brought his solution to market. But before we do that, I just want to make sure that any questions are being answered. Helen? Um, all right, Mike, are you, have you unmuted yourself? I'm back. Perfect. Great. Yes. Welcome back. 
So um, thank you. Now that I've given the you know theoretical background of it all, um, it's always great to hear how you're deploying it in real life. So let's just you know dive into the questions and maybe start with question one. So what was the motivating factor for you or for your business um, to move into the file sync deployment? Um, I, I, um, a lot of my clients, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in the small business, uh, um, uh, small businesses, and a lot of small businesses uh, don't um, always uh, work from within the office all the time, or out on the road a lot, and uh, um, business owners need to be uh, accessing files from home as well as their office, and uh, as a result of that, um, you know, VPNs and things like that were proving uh, tricky, and I've uh, used uh, or deployed a couple of other solutions for clients which um, have either um, been difficult or um, not particularly rely uh, reliable, um, such as SharePoint and OneDrive and actually with Dropbox as well. Right. So I was looking for something that could be a little bit more um, useful and, and actually add a few more services and, um, you know, um, and could seem to, to fit the bill. Right. Great. And um, could you comment on how, you know, this offering, Anchor in particular, has impacted client turnover and, um, if at all, how it improved the relationship with them? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, one of the, one of the issues that, um, that, that uh, I, I've been having sure. from uh, supporting clients was uh, the likes of mailboxes getting out of uh, control and huge, um, you know, huge attachments on emails, etc. And uh, one of the, uh, the add-ons to, um, to Anchor is an out Outlook agent, which will actually allow, um, you know, people to um, send, uh, send files um, you know, as a, as a link as opposed to uh, as an attachment, which obviously, um, you know, manages the, uh, um, you know, manages their mailbox sizes. But, you know, all of these sort of things are added benefits, which will, uh, you know, which, which of course, um, are relevant to a lot of my clients, not to all my clients, but to, to a lot of my clients. And, you know, if more services mean, mean more money and, you know, uh, and, a, and a better offering. And, you know, um, and the other thing as well is it, it keeps me ahead of um, the guys next door who, um, you know, who perhaps don't offer all these, uh, these additional services. Right. That was my follow-up question. So you do feel like that, you know, offering that service is putting you ahead of the competition? I, I, I believe it is, yes. I, I tend to work very, very closely with uh, with my clients. I'm not particularly aggressive in uh, taking on lots and lots of um, new clients, but I tend to uh, build uh, very strong relationships with with my existing client base, taking on one or two new clients, um, you know, as as my as my uh, time permits. Right. Um, and you know, as a result of that, it's, it's really important that I'm that I'm offering a good you know a good range of services to these to these people. Right. Yeah, makes sense. And um, I know you just mentioned that um, before deploying Anger, you had other solutions that your clients were using and you looked at other solutions, um, particularly Dropbox, OneDrive. Um, would you be able to just go into more depth of the features that you really didn't like about it um, if you felt like they were lacking security for your clients and following from that, the one feature that really sold you on Anger? Um, well, I mean, the, the, the biggest deployments that I had beforehand were actually with SharePoint, um, mm -hmm. and I just found it really clunky and very, very slow. Um, and, you know, I, I, um, the, the, for a lot of my clients, of course, their information um, has to be kept, they have to feel that it's, that it's safe um, and, and that it's well protected, but realistically, the availability of their documents to the right people at the right time is actually equally important to them. Uh, in fact, probably almost more important to them. Um, so, you know, com combining security with, um, you know, um, with usability is, is, is actually um, is the key, the key issue uh, to, uh, to them. And as I say, you know, um, the, the other products don't don't offer uh, quite as, in, in my opinion, don't offer quite as, um, you know, um, as many. Um, of the extra benefits that, that Anchor does, and I also don't think that um, you know a lot of the people that, that have, uh, for instance, have deployed Dropbox uh, just assume that it's free because of their consumer offering, and it, it's 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 offering that a real differential. Um, I, I think is, is is actually easier to get the point across. 
Right. Yeah. And um, when going, you know, going into your clients' offices or talking to them um, and introducing the concept of anger, did you ever perceive any hesitation on their side um, of deploying a cloud filing solution at all? Um, concerns about risks, et cetera? And how would you, how did you overcome those? Um, I think, um, you know, again, um, with the fact that I work uh, so closely um, with my clients, I, I'm, I'm very much uh, almost an insider part of their team. So, so um, my clients tend to listen to me um, most of the time, quite well, <laughs> um, but um, you know, but uh, you know, the um, it, it, I, I haven't found that every single client um, I've been able to convert yet, and um, you know, uh, perhaps some have taken a little bit longer than, than others, but most of them, um, you know, tend to listen more to the um, well. I find most of them listen to the, the benefits and how it's going to improve their, their working day more than. Um, you know more, more than the other issues and as I say if they, if they, if they want to be out of the office and they haven't got access to the files and you know some of them have been previously um, you know copying files from a server to to the uh, to their laptops um, and you know that that's caused problems because other people have opened files and, uh, um, in between right. and you know so that 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 having having a, um, a, a system that they can actually Easier, uh, it's easier to take their files offline as well as uh, being able to uh, to operate on a day-to-day -day basis has been the has been the biggest selling point for me. And you know, I, I'll be totally honest with you. Maybe I should um, sell more on security, but I sell on 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 the benefits that this is going to offer them and how much easier their day is going to be. Right, right. Um, that's something we often hear from partners. Um, that's the main starting point. You know, highlighting the features that. Anchor provides them with that other services don't. Um, and then, you know, from there, if they are still hesitant, then they usually throw in the, the security functions and they're like, well, on top of all these features, you also get, you know, much more safety for your data. Um, but so it makes sense that you would start there and then take the discussion from there. Um, one, yeah. Actually, one thing that may be worthwhile adding in there, Ariane, that um, one of my... Um, one of my clients is not a, not a managed client, but uh, you know, it's, it's just a um, sort of a break fix client. I, I got them onto the system because they actually had a uh, crypto locker attack, and um, they had they, it cost them a lot of money to uh, to get their files back. Yeah. Since then, we've actually uh, we've actually de um, deployed um, you know anchor onto the network on on a. Um, on the, um, oh, I've got the, the, the name of it is the, the server sync um, solution that you guys have, which keeps the, the server in sync. Right. And so if it's if they have that uh, if they have the, um, that issue again, it's um, it's really easy to um, be able to roll back to the to, to a previous version of the files and and, and recover uh, very quickly. Right. Yeah. Um, so the feature so we have file server enablement, which allows you to, you know, connect your server configurations and put them in the cloud. And then the feature you mentioned is rollback versioning, which is great, especially for CryptoLocker, um, because it's particularly when you know that, you know, last night at 8 p.m. all your data was fine, then a CryptoLocker attack happened um, and you found out early this morning, you can go into the web portal and just select the time and date that you want to roll back to um, and just restore your data within minutes that way. and Definitely lets a lot of clients sleep sleep easier at night. Um, so that's yeah, great point. Let me just yeah, file server enablement. Helen threw in. Um, so once you convince your partners or clients of the solution, how do you price and package the product? Okay, well I um, have chosen to uh, sell it with a with a minimum. Um, Package of of um, you know five users, uh, five licenses. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you, you, realistically, you end up having to do the same amount of work for, um, or more or less the same amount of work for for deploying it to uh, to one person as you would do to five. So um, I, I um, tend to package it with with a with a monthly cost for um, for the service. I uh, charge a um, you know um, a deployment fee um, based on um, the um, you know the number of users that they have, 
-hmm. and the amount of time that it would take, and depending on whether they want me to manage the, you know, um, the, the uh, thinking of the files online, etc. Um, and I also charge separately for branding the product as well with right. the client's own, uh, own um, you know, imagery. Um, so you do make you do take advantage of eFolders white label capability, and you just push it out as your own brand and logo. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, and that's and it's, it's quite popular that with uh, with my clients I find. Yeah, exactly. Um, the majority of our partners does take advantage of the white label function. Um, so for anyone on the call who didn't know, um, you we and especially in marketing. Um, we provide a bunch of different collateral and material that you can use to, you know, simplify the sell um, or, you know, speed up the marketing process. So we would design presentation slides like this one, but instead of the e-folder logo, you could just quickly put your own logo on there and name it however you want to. And you can also brand the portal, um, the app, and um, name the sync tool however you would like. And that also can be done on the client level. So for bigger companies, that's also something that a lot of you know partners appreciate. So how would you say has eFolder Anchor supported your business for one and your clients' businesses? Okay, well, I, I no longer run a server um, internally at all. All my business is run from the cloud. So, um, you know, it's, it's really useful being able to access, um, you know, my, my client information and client files uh, for myself, uh, whether it be through, through my laptop or through the iPad or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I, I find that that's very efficient. Um, my, my clients, to be honest, they use it in, in, in different clients use it in slightly different ways. So I've got a... A sports club who um, want to keep all their, um, you know, uh, committee members um, um, abreast of, of of their information, and, and rather than printing out, um, you know, lots and lots of paper for every meeting that they have, they they now um, are using, um, you know, um, anchor as as a way of actually transferring the information around, and that's actually uh, the, the client uh, the actual staff members are finding that much easier to, to keep um, to keep the right information in, in front of the right people and they can actually see when people are actually uh, getting access to uh, to these files as well and they, so they know when people are actually on board so right. you know, there's, there's quite a there's quite a number of different ways of actually being able to um, you know uh, for them to be able to, to use it right. um, and um, and also I, I tend to, I, I create a lot of, um, I don't think I'm alone in this, I, I create quite a lot of, um, you know, for how-to-do sheets uh, for clients for, I don't know, anything from deploying, um, uh, let's say, an Office 365 account onto an, uh, an iPhone, when I have lots of pictures, etc. And I share those, um, you know, through eFolder to, to the relevant uh, clients as well. Right. Um, and, you know, and I can actually create guest uh, areas so that if, if clients want to actually upload stuff, um, mm -hmm. they, um, into, into my into into a folder for me to, to have a look at. They right. can actually uh, sign in and and have a look at that too. So uh, and the guest accounts um, are, are free, so it's really good. Definitely, yeah. That's a good side note um, to make a bit of advertisement for um, next week's webinar, which is next Thursday, um, same time, same place, um, where we'll talk about the different features, the different sharing features that Anchor provides. Um, to just give clients more secure options, more control over the different files they share, and um, we'll have again we'll have a partner on board who's going to demo the different um, different types of sharing. So anyone who's interested, um, stay tuned for the emails. But um, yeah, so back to you, Mike. Would you say that most of your clients are you know have remote users, and that's another what reason why they really like Anchor? Um, or does that not play too much of a role? Uh, yeah, I mean, as I say, um, a lot of my clients do uh, have remote users, completely remote users, who, who come into the office very, very, very seldomly. But I've also got uh, a lot of clients who are out of the office and need to access their files as well. So they might, they might be working on on premise or just working at home. Um, I, I actually just deployed eFolder to a client this week who is off. Um, the, the manager of the business um, is actually off on um, long-term sick, but he still needs to keep in control of his business, but he just can't go into the office. 
Right. So um, as a result of that, we've deployed uh, we've deployed uh, Anchor in his business this week just to uh, to allow him to you know keep in touch with his uh, his files, his email. He already get, is able to get his emails, so he can pretty much work. Um, with everybody in the office, although he's he's based at home and can only work shorter days. Right, right. Um, let me just. We have a question. Um, I think Helen had trouble hearing, um, but it's back. Um, so I think that's a very important feature. Um, the you know enablement of remote users because they have access to all the data because they're able to create team share folders, um, which means that you can give multiple people access to the same files and then get them synced in real life. Um, I mean, even at eFolder, we have a bunch of remote employees. I work in Berlin and I can still cooperate with my team in San Francisco, almost as if I were in my office. It's a little quieter here, um, but I have the same amount of documents. And so um, so once it's deployed um, for your clients, once you have the solution installed and configured the way you want it, um, do you, do you think that you still have a lot of, um, you know, that you still have to dedicate a lot of time managing the solution for them once it's deployed? No, I, I really don't, actually. Um, you know, people sometimes need a little bit of help with uh, certain elements like setting up, a, a, you know, additional team shares and things like that. But, you know, realistically, it's um, once, it, it, it's so, particularly the, um, the the computer based client, um, you know, it's just like using the C drive really on, on on your on your computer. It becomes really quite easy. So, apart from perhaps adding some new team shares and things like that, and and, and changing some of the permissions for people, um, I really find it um, it pretty much does does what it's meant to do with it with with uh, very little um, help. Great for me. We like to hear that. <laughs> so that's good. Um, but seeing that you um, started off your own business from scratch, um, what are some best practices or you know some tips that you could give other MSPs that might also just be pretty new starting off, um, looking to move into the managed service model, looking to, de to deploy cloud file sync? Um, any tips or best practices you could share with them? Yeah, I mean, I think you need to be um, the the, most, the key thing, and to be totally honest, the thing that I got the, uh, made the biggest mistake with um, right through my um, right through the development of my business was being very clear what you're offering, and and that becomes much more important uh, when you when you are um, making some sort of managed service products. So be very very clear what you're offering, and make sure that the client understands what the framework of that offering is, because. Okay. Um, it's it's very easy for them to think that just because you provide some managed services that you they, they can they can use all of your all of your time that you're a full time employee you can almost uh, uh, populate their spreadsheets for them which <laughs> I'm, I'm being a bit flippant <laughs> but um, you know but um, you know you need to be very defined you know what the actual offering includes and what and what those borders are and uh, and uh, and price it accordingly. Um, and I and I, I find that you know uh, clients quite hap uh, quite happy um, you know buying from a menu of of, of different options and um, as long as they understand what they what they're paying for um, you know um, that that becomes easy where it becomes uh, a little bit more difficult is if they they think that um, for every mistake that they make they can just they they, they call you and it's included within the price and it, right. it took me a little while to to, to figure that one out. Right. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, and maybe one last question from my end. Um, when you introduce um, Anchor to them or just in general cloud products um, before Anchor, was it ever a concern to your clients where the data is stored, whether it's in the EU or the US? Was that something that um, your clients inquired about or were... I, 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 I'll be honest with you, my clients haven't, but my clients, mm -hmm. uh, I do have a number of clients who are much more concerned about the cloud as a, as a platform, um, you know, and there's a lot of sort of um, mystery about it. And one of the things um, which is probably an easier example to, to explain is, uh, you know, if you look at, um, you know, hosted uh, email, um, people go. Well, I don't want to move all my files into the cloud. Anybody can get a hold of them, but right. you know, all email comes through the cloud. You know, right. so 
Um, so how do you, you know, react it, to that it, then? It's, it's a non-option. How do you react I, to I it? Try and, I, I explain to them that, that actually they're already using the cloud, and although <laughs> the cloud is a great new buzzword, it's, uh, it, it's nothing really particularly new, and it's been going on for as long as their, uh, their computers have been connected to the internet. Right. <laughs> so just more, just a bit more education on, on your end and probably, yeah. Um, yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, um, I do, I mean, I do, I mean, I think to be honest with you, I think uh, often, particularly with smaller businesses and unregulated businesses, as in, you know, sort of, I'm sure it's very different with legal and, and health and, and, and uh, government, etc., uh, which I don't really do an awful lot with, but you know, I think, um, you know, I, I, I tend to mention that uh, things are stored within Europe and so you've got European laws rather than American laws and uh, mm. Uncle Sam isn't, um, you know, sort of jumping into everything. But, <laughs> you know, that's really as a, as a value add rather than, than the main right. feature of one of my, uh, for my sales, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, good point. Good to know. Um, yeah, when you mention it, they tend to go, oh, yeah, that's good. But <laughs> they didn't, often they don't think about it. Right, yeah. No, that makes sense. All right, great, thank you. Um, so now that you've heard quite a bunch um, about eFolder Anchor, the different capabilities and you know real life applications, I um, just wanted to make sure that you know that you are able to trial Anchor for free for three weeks. Um, so we'll send out emails regarding that um, and have our product specialist follow up on that. And as a thank you for registering and joining in for the webinar today, um, we do have a special offer related to Anchor. Um, in regards to the 100 Anchor licenses with file server enablement, which as we mentioned earlier, means that you can keep the file server com configuration that you already have in place, but leverage the power of the cloud to um, you know, make all that file server data also accessible through the cloud um, at, 400 pounds instead of 650 pounds, um, and it's a month-to-month -month contract. So as long as you stay with us under that contract, your price will never go to the full 650, which is what we usually charge at wholesale. Um, so that's just something for you to know. But um, with that, I would just like to open the floor for discussions or questions. Um, there's one coming in from Helen asking, does Mike find the eFolder solution profitable based on the margins we offer? Yes. That's I a do, good question. Because there's not a lot of work. There's, there's not a lot of work, uh, you know, after the initial setup, which the client pays for, uh, you know, it's, it's really just taking, um, you know, a, um, you know, a fee every month. And um, to be totally honest with you, I can't remember the pricing that um, you know that, that, that I'm that I'm on for eFolder. I have a feeling that, that Ariane, that we pr probably should be speaking and think, finding out why I'm not being getting the same offer as you've offered these guys. But uh, but um, but you know, I I I, I mark it up. Um, I I'm pretty certain I mark it up by about 150 percent on on an agent uh, uh, basis, and I've got various value adds that I can add around that as well. So yes, it is profitable. Nice, great, thank you. Um, would, you would you say that you charge about the same that your competitors charge, um, you know, or is that, are you charging slightly more, less? I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know. Um, right. What I base my cost on is actually what, um, uh, what Dropbox professional charges. Okay. So okay. I'm, I'm charging out about uh, 15 pounds a, a user a month. Right. Okay, that's a that's a good threshold or you know basis to compare yourself to. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see if we have any more questions. Nothing coming in. Oh, one more. Um, <laughs> okay, Helen wants me to mention the the marketing help that eFolder provides. Um, so you know, as we're ramping up our um, our focus, we are a U.S. company, um, but we are serious about putting as much emphasis on the partners we already have in EMEA and the future ones we are um, hopefully going to gain in the next couple of weeks and months. So um, we have a dedicated staff that is in Europe in, you know, British and Central European time zones. Um, so we have Helen, who is um, your account manager, as your partner. Um, so if you become a partner of eFolder, you will 
um, transition to Helen, who's located in Leeds um, and uh, is, you know, your contact point for any account questions, billing questions, et cetera. Then we have um, a sales team member, um, Kenny, who's in Aberdeen, um, lovely guy. I can't understand the, the Aberdeen accent. Um, it sounds great, it sounds friendly, I just can't understand it. Um, and then we have myself in Berlin and I'm the marketing contact for you guys. So my time is not only spent designing collateral that you can white label and push out to your clients, but I can also help any partner with marketing campaigns. So especially because a lot of our MSPs partners are just like Mike, a small business, keeping it tight, you know, in a small group of employees. Many of um, many of our MSPs partners usually don't have time to do dedicated marketing campaigns or initiatives. Mike, do you have a marketing staff member? Is your wife taking over marketing, explicit marketing activities? I, to be honest with you, I, most of my marketing is done by word of mouth, to be fairly honest with you. I, right, I probably exactly. should do more, but it's almost all it's word of mouth um, and working closely with my existing clients. Exactly, and that's that's the majority of our partners that we have in Europe. So um, if you do have the feeling that you should be doing more marketing, but you just don't have the time to figure it out or to really sit down and do it, um, I'm here to help you with that also and you know draft email campaigns or figure out a social marketing strategy with you guys. So um, we do try and provide as much individual one-on-one -on -one support as possible um, for every partner that we have. Um, another comment coming in. Um, Helen wants me to also mention the consistent and progressive product roadmap um, to constantly stay ahead of the competition and that our partners have input on this. Yes, good point, Helen. Um, so just introducing how much say our partners have in features that should be added. Um, we have a dedicated product development team that is based in San Francisco. Um, and of course they do their own research on the product and features that are most wanted on the market these days. But we do believe that our partners know best um, what their clients really want, what they really want um, in terms of features. So we do have um, a partner portal where Partners can request features um, and like feature requests that have already been put down. Um, and product development spends a huge amount of time on that page just to see what, you know, what the clients desire, what the partners desire. Um, and we do regularly, regularly product, um, publish product roadmaps um, that give you and your clients a better idea of, hey, even if these features are currently not being offered, they will be by then at the latest. So. That. I can give you an example, actually, of where that's really, really helped, actually, to be honest with you, Ariane, if, if it's yes, useful to you. Definitely. Uh, when I, when I, when I, um, when I first uh, came on to um, start using Anchor, which is about six months ago, um, there wasn't any way for the um, of, of getting documents into eFolder from the uh, from an iPad. Um, easily or from an email on an iPad mm -hmm. and um, you know it's there and it was, it, I know probably people have been mentioning it before before I did but you know I mentioned it and it seemed didn't seem that long before it um, you know um, it happened and that was actually quite key because I actually had a, uh, an iPad deployment for um, you know for, for one of my clients um, and they um, they were saying maybe we should go with Dropbox because Dropbox integrates. And I was thinking, no, no, wait, just just hold on, it's it's coming, it's coming, and it did. It came very, very quickly. So, right. you know, I was I was actually really impressed with how you guys, um, you know, I don't know, you may have been working on it for ages beforehand, but you know, how, <laughs> how quickly these sort of things came these, these things came it came into fruition. Right. Yeah. And then exactly, it can definitely help you with your sales pitch and your sales strategy. Um, so thanks for that input. And then we have a question from Richard Fry who says Dropbox Pro and Box have um, Office 365 integration. Is this on your roadmap or currently being supported? Um, so Richard, we do have an Outlook plugin um, for yeah, Microsoft Outlook that enables you to quickly share files um, and find any documents that are in your sync tool and share them via email. Um, that way you don't have to deal with tedious, you know, um, file size limitations, et cetera. Um, in more depth, I would want to check the roadmap again, um, if there are any other features that 
I should mention here, um, and I'll get back to you individually, but we do have the Outlook plugin um, that, Mike, have you leveraged that a whole lot, or what's your experience with that? Yeah, the, I've got to say the, um, the Outlook integration um, is great, because uh, not only, uh, you can actually set it that any, you know, to, uh, to make all attachments come through uh, Dropbox, so even if you, uh, sorry, through uh, Anchor, sorry, right. um, you know, so um, if you, uh, you know, so it will actually, Outlook will actually recognize that, that, that it's an attachment, even if it's a, um, um, a file that's not already in your uh, Anchor system already, it will, um, it will actually automatically add it in, into, into the system for you, and then just provide it as part of a link. So, you know, I've got to say, I, I really think, I really, really like that functionality, and I know uh, some, several of my clients do as well. Right. As far as I'm aware, um, you know, Dropbox doesn't offer the, the equivalent to that. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Or if they do, it's new. Yeah, it, it could be new. Um, I think he was talking about Dropbox Pro, which I know has a couple more features than Dropbox, but, um, yeah, no, definitely. The Outlook function is, has, has been pretty handy for many clients and partners, for sure. Um, all right. So, um, any more questions? Doesn't look like it. I can hear incoming calls, um, so sorry. No, no worries. Um, so let's great, let's get this wrapped up. Um, thank you so much for everyone who registered and joined in on the call. Thank you so much, Mike, for making the time to talk to us. Um, especially being a busy business owner, um, that is very much appreciated. And everyone else, stay tuned on upcoming webinars in the future. We'll have twice. Um, two webinars each month, and you will see emails hitting your inbox regarding that. But yeah, so thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Uh, we have one more question coming in. Oh, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome, Richard. Have a great day.